Thanks, Arpit. Uh, hi, I think a lot of you know me. I'm Heather Kirksey, VP of Community and Ecosystem for LF Networking. I've been here at the Linux Foundation for a number of years, and I am very excited to uh, introduce and have with us today uh, Caroline Chapel from Analysis Mason. She heads up their cloud research division, and she has a great long history, uh, both with cloud computing and all the transitions like NFE, and a great uh, depth uh, in Telcom from OVM to heavy reading. And she and I have uh, interacted with each other quite a bit uh, over the years. Uh, she's someone I consider a very uh, trusted colleague and friend, and I'm very excited to have her here today. So welcome, Caroline. Thank you very much, Heather. Well, thank you very much for inviting me to be here today. So great to see you and, uh, and to be part of this event. Thank you. So Caroline is actually here to talk about some research that uh, Analysis Mason has done uh, and that we have worked on uh, with the Linux Foundation, with LF Networking, around creating a cloud maturity model for uh, CSPs who are taking that cloud native journey, both from an organizational and technical perspective, as well as beginning to start creating the data of the folks in the ecosystem. You know, what are their challenges? How are they developing? And with that, I'll turn it over to you to uh, start sharing with us some of your key in insights. Sure. Well, thank you again, Heather, for, for inviting me. And, and certainly, and today, I'd like to introduce just a few highlights from the cloud transformation benchmark that, as Heather said, we, we started this work about uh, this research uh, work about a year ago because what we wanted to do was really to understand how ready um, our operators, our CSPs, um, for this big cloud native journey they are taking, primarily, of course, with their 5G networks. But we think it's going to, this, this journey is only going to spread into other uh, networking domains as well. Um, and we, uh, we, we're following really on a tradition for four years, we ran something called the Telco Cloud Index, which really looked at, at NFV maturity. And so this is specifically uh, doing similar kind of thing, but specifically about the, as, as Heather said, about the, the cloud native journey. So, uh, and we're very grateful uh, for the Linux Foundation sponsorship of, of this study. So we, uh, in the first phase, and we aim for this to be a longitudinal study, in the first phase of, uh, of, of the cloud, native, uh, cloud transformation benchmark, we actually had 10 participating CSPs from around the globe. And you can see on the left-hand side of the slide here, uh, which parts of the globe they came from. Uh, and we were talking to very senior executives uh, in uh, those CSPs about their cloud native journey. And we had a long questionnaire that they, they and their colleagues, that some of them had to, to uh, obviously bring in lots of colleagues to help um, answer these questions, um, a quite detailed questionnaire looking at the uh, a, a various aspects of, uh, of cloud nativeness, if you like. And basically we were, um, and uh, let's get rid of that. Um, Basically, the, the, the matrix is built around uh, uh, the, the two axes of the matrix of te technological maturity and organizational maturity. Because as everyone who's been on the first the NFB journey and now the cloud native uh, journey knows that organizational maturity is just as important, if not more important than, than technological maturity. So we would want to look at the readiness in uh, both those dimensions of how ready uh, uh, the, the CSPs were. And then within uh, each, of, um, each of those uh, dimensions, we looked at the level of implementation that's, that's currently, uh, that the uh, CSPs are currently uh, undertaking the vision that they have towards, towards their cloud platform and, and what their clouds look like, and also their automation and agility. And then on the organizational side, we were looking at how far do, is cloud native, uh, are cloud native principles, approaches, uh, capabilities permeating across the organization. So not just in the network, because the network can learn a lot from, from uh, 
the IT side of the business that, that may be actually more mature in terms of adopting uh, cloud native technologies. So we wanted to look at, at the, the involvement both across the organization um, and you know, what kind of level of senior level uh, executive support did, did the uh, CSPs have? We looked at how far um, the CSPs uh, regard cloud native as an important investment priority. And also we're looking at um, their open source attitude. Now, I know uh, that might be a question that you would pose to me, Heather, is why are we looking specifically at, at open source? And that's because we regard open source as a proxy for software capability. Um, because the, if you look at the 5G network, it's being built on a substrate of open source projects and tooling around the Kubernetes ecosystem. And though that, that uh, all those projects and tools are being developed by very software capable organizations. So we think this is a proxy really for, for as I said, for, 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 for software capability. And I think there's a bit of a vogue at the moment for telcos to say, we're not telcos, we're techcos. Well, given the importance of, um, uh, of software technologies, then we thought it was perfectly legitimate to, to test that and say, well, if you're really a techco, you know, how far are you contributing to participating in uh, open source projects? So that was another thing we, we, we benchmarked. Caroline, I am one of the, I am certainly not a person who's ever going to question the importance of open source uh, in, in any sort of cloud native journey. Uh, but thank you for, I was going to ask you to sort of uh, explain that a little bit more. But yeah, for me, you're preaching to the choir. <laughs> Indeed. Well, I, I, I anticipated what your question might be, Heather, so I apologize for that. Okay, so here are the results mapped on those two dimensions, the technological maturity and the organizational maturity. And you can see straight away that we don't regard any um, uh, uh, operator today as being truly cloud native, really a long way on that cloud native uh, journey. However, there are two very definite, um, what we call cloud native visionaries, uh, who have every intention of, of going all the way and, and are moving up, beginning to move up into that, uh, that, that uh, upper uh, right-hand quadrant. So uh, these cloud-native visionaries are being very influential in the market. They're the ones really setting the pace. They're setting the best practices um, that, the, that the rest of the industry is learning from and following. Um, but they, they still have uh, quite a long way to go to scale out and, and to really adopt everything that they, they uh, want to do in, in terms of their, their long cloud native checklists, if you like. And then we have the primed adopters and we call them primed adopters because these are uh, CSPs that uh, are actually have, have done a lot of things and put a lot of things in place they haven't yet taken that kind of final step of really uh, launching at scale um, in, in a cloud native way. So they're making strides forward. They've got uh, the right um, environment, if you like, to be able to scale, but uh, are, just, uh, are, are just sort of at that threshold of, of, of being able to move forward. Then we have the cautious adopters. Um, and this is an interesting group because we saw the same group um, in, in pretty much the same position when we did the Telco Cloud Index. Now, the cautious adopters, you know, they, they are convinced that, of course, they're, they're going to have to um, uh, adopt uh, cloud native um, technologies, obviously, as they roll out their 5G networks, but they're being a little slower and they've got a little bit of a different profile. Uh, from, from the uh, primed adopters and the cloud native uh, visionaries, as, as we'll see when we, when we move to the next slide. Where we think the bulk of the market is today, Heather, is, is in that followers category. You know, people are still saying, oh, the technology is very immature, or I'm not sure, you know, what, what we're going to, what we need to do to, to, um, 
to, to adopt it. We're still sort of working on our strategies and so on. So we think, you know, obviously we've only got 10 of the, of the um, probably leading operators in, in the uh, benchmark at the moment. We thought, think if we did a lot more, we'd find a lot more in that followers uh, category, because to be honest, that's, you know, that, that's kind of where the, 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 the market is today. So I don't know if you've got any questions on, on this particular slide. Yeah, no, I mean, I think I'd like to dig in a little bit more into some of these profiles. And I, I just have a, you know, a couple questions there, um, if you do want to move on to the, the next slide. And, you know, one of, you know, I think one question I have is, um, you know, it seems as though the visionaries are doing a very good job of integrating the business and technical aspects uh, of this journey. Um, as you're looking at sort of the entirety of the plot and the entirety of the groups out there uh, or organizations out there, do you see them sort of moving technically first and then more business driven or is it the other way around or does it, does it vary? And, you know, what would you take from that in terms of advice for folks in the ecosystem, you know, no matter where they are in the supply chain or where they are on the journey? Yes, I think you can very clearly see from our spider charts, and obviously these are the averages. Um, so, so each individual operator would 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 come up slightly differently, but these are the averages of of, of all the operators in the group. Um, and you can see very clearly that the visionaries are very well rounded. As you say, they are they are making progress on both fronts, on both the business side and and, and the technolo the technological maturity is also very good. The primed adopters, uh, if, if you look, they've, they've, they're the business, they've, they've made strides forward on the business side almost before um, they're, they're, they're doing the implementation. So look at the cloud platform vision they have, the investment priority, um, that, that, that's, that signals you know, quite, a, quite a mature, um, uh, 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 quite well, sorry, uh, quite a mature, um, a balanced organisation in terms of one is te technologically advanced and the other is is, um, is is business advanced. But they still got some work to do to really bring together uh, the the cross organisational support that they're going to need to scale. So we think that's the next step they've got to take is is looking at that cross organizational support because they've got to get the whole business behind them if, if they're going to, uh, to, to take that step forward. And as I say, scale up their cloud native uh, operations. So that's, so again, the cross organization support and the implementation kind of go hand in hand as well. And then if we look at the, the uh, cautious adopters, um, they, they're, they're sort of not, uh, they, they, they have made quite a lot of progress on the organizational side, but however, they're not prioritizing uh, cloud nativeness as much as the visionaries or the primed adopters. And so that shows in the fact that they are cautious, they're, 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 until they do uh, get that kind of priority, make it an investment priority, um, put the senior executives behind it, you know, the vision behind it, it's, it's going to be um, that they're going to actually uh, be slower really in terms of the implementation. So they're quite a long way. If you, if you look at that spider chart, they're a long way from, from implementation. So I think we saw very much the same patterns when we were doing the Telco Cloud Index with, with NFE. And the uh, operators that made the most progress were what we call the balanced adopters, the ones that managed to keep the technological maturity, the, you know, the technological advances they were making in lockstep with the organizational advan uh, um, advances. And I think this is a key lesson again that we're seeing all over again. You know, transformation is not just about technology. It's, it's primarily about people and processes. And you can't change people and processes. Uh, that's got to come from the top. And it's the same story all over again. Right. So, so even though we're sort of continuing to improve in some ways, we're, we're doing a similar journey that we were on, um, you know, when we started the entire NFE transformation. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's really, I think it's a story of technology transformation in general. People, people fixate on the technology, but actually 
you know, arguably a lot of the technology is there and 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 relatively mature. I know, you know, I think if we move on to the next slide, you'll see from a um, a barrier perspective, uh, um, the, the the top barrier that that all the CSPs said was, well, oh, the, the cloud native functions are not are not mature are not mature yet, and certainly. Um, We've seen that when we've actually done a similar kind of benchmark for the uh, for the vendors as we have for, for for the operators, we do see that particularly the uh, obviously the RAN is uh, the RAN CNFs are not there yet. Um, the the core, on the other hand, the five G core, uh, five G standalone cores, and so on, they're, they're actually pretty pretty mature. But what what isn't mature is the um, the the, the Ability for for individual CSPs to to adopt those those um, cloud native uh, functions, and indeed, you know, if from a vendor's perspective, if you've got one CSP that's saying, "Give me, you know, I've got my CI/CD pipelines in place, I can take updates on a daily basis," and you've got the bulk of your market saying, "Oh goodness, you know, I can't take updates every six months," you know. <laughs> um, you, you've got a you've got a challenge in terms of of supporting the the, the range of of, of uh, CSPs. So you know, not not to excuse vendors for for not moving fast enough, but I do see that there's some difficulty there if if the CSPs themselves are not ready to accept some of the uh, cloud native practices that that are needed in order to uh, to, to 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 run the CNFs. Yeah. And I kind of want to dig in a little bit to that because, you know, there's a conservatism maybe expressed there. But when I look at the drivers, one of the things that really strikes me is the 90% that the time to launch new services, right? Like that's a business driver. That's a, that's a time to revenue. That's a develop new services more than it, you know, it's significantly more than cutting costs. And I'll admit, I, I find that a little surprising given that we've just been through this pandemic, through this time that's felt a little contracted, but still at the top levels of the business, it seems as though you know, this desire to capitalize to, for new services, to become more agile, to move fast really does remain um, a, a prime driver for the way, you know, the, the end users are are thinking about this, which, you know, it's it's a, to me, it's a little bit more positive than some of the, I don't know, the challenges or, you know, the the fact that, you know, we've got visionaries, but we don't have, you know, what, what we would consider, you know, cloud native leaders yet, but it looks as though we are being excited and driven by something that is, you know, very forward looking. Yes, and I think this is a big change. I don't, I don't know whether whether you see this as well, but I think this is a big change from when we did the Telco Cloud Index and the NFE days, because there the focus was much more split between operational costs and customer experience. So the customer experience did come through, but the agility, the time to launch new services, this the the prominence of that I think is new. So what I I agree with you. I think this gives me heart even though when you look back and you look at the different profiles of the of the operators and you say well you know a lot of them don't yet have that vision and that uh, the, the the support of their senior execs in place but not fully yet um i think what it does show is as you say a, a, a strong desire uh to well a strong recognition that they do need to get the business side right. They do need to get the organizational maturity in place. And that's why I think they are further really along the x-axis, a lot of them, than, than, than the y-axis. So they are taking time to, to, to move forward on the, you know, getting the business behind them um, before trying to sort of adopt a lot of the technology. And I think that, that, that has to be very positive because I think that's the only way you're going to affect change. And yes, recognizing that time to launch new services, if you do have that agility, you can be a lot more competitive. Um, I, I think that recognition is seeping into, in, in, into the, the operators we, we've been talking to. Yeah, well, and I'll just, you know, for me too, like sort of this, uh, as we're beginning, you know, we know we're not fully out of the pandemic and everything, but 
you know, we're emerging from what has felt, you know, like a challenging time. Um, you know, the fact that we're sort of primed to be looking at new services, that we are further along in our understanding of this feels like, you know, we're, we're maybe on the cusp of something, you know, very exciting uh, if we really, really, you know, sort of put our, our hearts and minds to it and our, you know, our, our shoulders to the grindstone, so to speak. Well, well, to be fair, Heather, I think the pandemic has actually driven um, a lot of change um, and a, a lot of change in terms of service demand, you know, a lot of companies going to, to, the, to the cloud, a lot of uh, demand, a, a lot of, well, but maybe not so much in consumer behavior, but certainly in enterprise behavior, as they've realized that their supply chains, that their um, businesses themselves are not resilient. So, you know, and networks and the telecoms industry have been the net ben beneficiaries of the fact that, you know, companies are, are actually changing their practices and processes, going to the cloud, needing connectivity more than ever. Um, and I think that actually the pandemic has kind of, is, is kind of driving this acceleration in the need for new services um, to which our industry needs to respond. Yeah, and I think that actually sort of echoes, I think, a lot of what Andre said when he kicked us off this morning as well, when he was talking about the impact on AT&T of just the, the giant increases in data and the growing sort of necessity of access to that data for lots of people that the pandemic sort of threw up. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, so let's let's maybe move on a little bit to the, the the open source proxy, which once again is not perhaps across this entire breadth of operators quite perhaps as much as we might have hoped. But you know, I think when you and I were talking about the report, it sort of indicates you know that we are still growing. We're still getting to to the place where we really need to um, invest in open source in order to invest in this network transformation and this digital journey. Yes, I, I think um, open source is so critical. That whole Kubernetes ecosystem is so critical now to the 5G network that I think it is a big, well, a big disappointment, I think, that, that uh, operators are not participating more fully yet in, in, in some of these projects. Obviously, we've got some very, um, very significant you know, contributors uh, we, 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 uh, and, and, uh, and, well, and people at least who are sort of participating a little, but I think it's kind of worrying that, that you know, six out of our 10 operators said, well, we're, 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 we're not making any kind of contribution um, at all, or, or, and 50%, and you know, for half of them are not even participating in, in or not even sort of uh, uh, joining any, any of, the, uh, uh, of the bodies. I think a, lot, the, a number of them said, well, you know, things are moving so fast, you know, with, with, with resource constrained and so on. But as I said at the beginning, you know, if you're going to call yourself a tech company rather than a, a telco, and a lot of them are now saying, oh, yes, we, we, we want to be a tech company. We, we, you, you can't really do that unless you are, if you look at all the big tech companies on the planet, so the, the hyperscalers and, 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 uh, and, uh, and even sort of smaller um, uh, unicorn players, they're all, they are all tech companies in that they are software capable and able to produce open source, certainly to contribute to it. Uh, I, I think this is um, the, this this is a, a a a kind of warning bell. I would say it, that you know how far can you progress if you're not going to become sort of more involved in in open source and more more sort of determining of which of these projects and tools and so on. And there are so many of them, and they're all determining. You can, potentially be determining your fate because they're all being built into the cloud native functions that you're using, into the clouds that you're using. And if and if you're not sort of aware of them or, or, or able to sort of participate in them, you know, you're you're going to be constrained on that journey of being able to develop new new uh, services quickly, being able to change your network quickly, being able to automate your network, and you can't leave everything to the vendors if, if you want to be a, a, a truly a tech company. Right. 
Well, so um, we are beginning to, uh, I think, hit our time. But I mean, what I'm sort of yeah. hearing you say as, as a respected analyst, um, you know, especially to our end users is get involved in open source because it's one of the key things to do to drive you more and more to that leadership uh, place. And if you're interested in the report, um, and if you're interested in talking to Caroline, as she said, this is the first year we are hoping to make this a uh, yearly um, a longitudinal study to really have an index for how folks are doing. Um, I think on the next slide, um, you can download the report at um, uh, linuxfoundation.org. We just posted it this morning. It's hot off the process hot off the presses on lfnetworking.org. And if you are an operator or a vendor looking to get involved in the continuing uh, uh, tracking of this journey, uh, please reach out to Caroline. All right, thank you. Thanks, uh, Heather. Thanks, Caroline. Appreciate it.